and welcome back to The Verdict. I'm Paula Todd. We're going to go to our top story again. In Alberta, a 13-year-old medicine hack girl could spend up to six years in jail for murdering her parents and eight-year-old brother. In the U.S., it wasn't until recently, just over two years ago, that the U.S. Supreme Court banned the death penalty for those under 18 years old, calling it cruel and unusual punishment. But dozens, maybe hundreds of children are serving life sentences there with no chance of parole. Senator Leland Yee is lobbying to change the rules for youth sentences in California. He joins us tonight from San Francisco and here in studio, criminal lawyer David Rose, welcome to both of you. Senator, hundreds of young people, hundreds of kids uh, in prison right now on life sentences. What are they there for? How come they're there for so long? Well, in California, we have uh, within our penal code uh, the ability to sentence uh, youngsters who commit capital crime uh, to life uh, without uh, the possibility of any parole. When you commit a capital crime under certain special circumstance, the judge can, in fact, send you to life without the possibility of, of parole and throw away the key. Is there any uh, bottom on that age limit? We, for example, have uh, a girl who was 12, 13 now, when she had she just been found guilty of committing a triple homicide here in Canada, uh, 12 at the time. Our law barely captures her. What would happen to her in the United States? In the United States, uh, she could, in fact, uh, be found guilty under uh, a special circumstance, uh, premeditation, uh, plan activity, uh, that could in fact sentence this uh, young person to uh, life uh, without the possibility of parole here in California. We've got about 200 of those youngsters uh, in our prisons right now. Without the possibility of parole. Now you say that you're trying to change things. What change is that you're looking for, an age change? Well, I had a, a bill, uh, SB 999, which basically would change the penal code that would then say that those uh, individuals uh, who commit these capital crime, when they are a youngster, instead of life without with the possibility of parole, they would serve 25 years to life. So that they would need to serve at least 25 years before they come up for the possibility of parole. Okay, David Rose is a criminal lawyer in Toronto. Let's take the instant case. A 12-year-old when she committed three homicides. Uh, in the state, she'd probably go away for 25 years. How much is she? She hasn't been sentenced yet, but what is she likely looking at? Well, she's subject to a maximum of six years incarceration plus what's called a four-year community supervision term. So, in other words, um, the courts have a maximum of 10 years, uh, as they say, as the warrant before the warrant expires. Um, so, at age 23, she's going to be free and, and subject to no further uh, penalty. Right now, we cannot identify her because of the protections of our Youth Justice Act. After she gets out of uh, prison, and I'm, she can only be incarcerated for six years, she's 13 now, at 19, will we be able to identify her at that point, uh, maybe even warn the community? No, she's subject to the Youth Criminal Justice Act, and this is a youth sentence. So. Uh, the youth sentence provisions apply, which means that we can't identify her at any time. Ever. So yeah. no one will ever know that this is the, the person, in fact, who... Although, let's be realistic about it. This happens in Medicine Hat, and um, I, I'm confident that the people of Medicine Hat know who she is. Uh, Senator Yi, you obviously are um, lobbying to try to um, reform your uh, justice laws there. You, you, it looks like you're looking for more leniency for young people, uh, maximum of 25 years in prison. What do you think when you hear that we've got uh, a girl here who um, is guilty of killing mom, dad, and brother, a triple homicide, and uh, the most time that she will spend incarcerated is six years? Well, I, I, I'm a child psychologist uh, by background, and I believe in the uh, uh, possibility of rehabilitation. I, I believe that many youngsters, uh, when they commit these uh, particular horrendous crimes, uh, don't fully understand uh, what they did, uh, the consequences. Uh, they don't have the maturity to understand. I think that's one of the reasons why uh, our Supreme Court uh, basically said that we were not going to go and give uh, the capital uh, uh, punishment uh, to those individuals, youngsters who commit uh, uh, these uh, rather atrocious crimes. So we believe, uh, I believe, that it is extremely important that we look at rehabilitation for a lot of these youngsters. We have a case here in California where a girl, uh, uh, a young girl, 
and the age of nine I was put out in the streets at age 11 she started to prostitute herself because someone stalked her and turned her into a prostitute at the age of 17 she killed her pimp now she's now 26 she fully understands what she did she understands uh, the consequences of her uh, behavior uh, she has goals now she has skills and I think that as a civilized society we here in California should be looking at how to rehabilitate and give her an opportunity another chance in life unfortunately right now she's going to be in prison for the rest of her life no rehabilitation no chance to ever see daylight again so if she were here though she would certainly have a chance to experience freedom what do you think uh, about the case we're talking about though um, uh, a girl who's committed a triple homicide is six years uh, in a secure facility, you, you've got a psychiatric background, sufficient time to rehabilitate a girl that some people fear may also be suffering from psychopathy, maybe a psychopath. Well, I, you know, I would hope that uh, within Canada's law that uh, there will be an opportunity to provide treatment for her and that professionals would make an evaluation to determine uh, whether or not uh, after six years uh, uh, she is in fact um, uh, understanding, accepting, and dealing uh, with what she did and uh, whether or not there needs to be ongoing treatment, ongoing therapy for her uh, so that she continues to deal with uh, uh, what she did and uh, rehabilitate and uh, bring back uh, some of the controls that uh, mm -hmm. most of us would have uh, relative to how you deal with pressure. But David, under the Canadian system, the most time she can spend is six years, there is four years of supervision. Can the court mandate psychiatric treatment, psychiatric analysis, and if they do determine that she's a psychopath, is there anything they can do with her beyond that ten years? Yeah, well there's a lot of rehabilitative aspects to our justice system for youths, and that's actually mandated right in the Youth Criminal Justice Act. But in, before we sort of march on and say psychopath, it's a sort of a technical label for people, and uh, as horrific as the crime is, and I, you have to feel for everyone, the whole situation with this uh, young girl is just horrific. And, and sentencing this young girl is going to be difficult. It's not just a question of saying, give her the maximum sentence. I mean, six years is the maximum. It may not be what the sentence that she actually receives, but what we do in Canada with a community supervision order and something like this is bring the young person back as their sentence, their incarceration, their detention is about to expire and then they're sentenced to this community supervision and the judge is going to look at how she's progressing and what's going on in, in her mind and um, what's, let's tailor an appropriate community supervision order with rehabilitation and uh, all of the principles in mind. But just to be clear, and you make a very good point, the maximum incarceration she can get is six years, she may not get that. Uh, if she does get the ten, she's, let's say she's six years incarcerated, four years of supervision. Beyond that ten, this is a, an extraordinary crime. Is there any way for, we, we know we can't identify her, is there any way for society to keep its protective hand on her? Well, of course. I mean, there, there is provisions of the uh, criminal code which would apply. She'd be an adult at that point. And this happens a lot with adults who are released after a, a, a term of incarceration and the police are of the view that this person is a danger. And they're brought back before a judge for what's called a, uh, a Section 810 order, and they're put under a, a supervision for two years, and again, the police have control over them. All right, I'm going to say thank you now to criminal lawyer David Rose in Toronto and Senator Leland Yee. And coming up next...